<laughs> we've just had an ice bath expert text me saying that the ice bath's usually between 50 and 55 degrees. Yeah, jump in them and think you think it's 50 or 55 degrees. That's funny. There's no chance you're going to think it's 50. It may be 50 or 55 degrees. You're going to feel like it's about 30 degrees. And I don't think, I don't really, I, I kind of, a little, there's a little bit of me that wants to know, that just wants to know what it would be like. Because I watch the polar plunge and stuff when people race. Well, they did it in Union City. Do it. When, when I was uh, rehabbing my knee, I was up in Maine, yeah. and I had to go swimming, and I, I had to tread water for like an hour. Oh. And so I would go out there in the mornings, and uh, the water was probably 60, something like that. And when you first got in it, it was not good. But the, when you got out, it, you just feel so exhilarated and refreshed. And I, it's something about cold water. I don't. It's because you're trying to stay alive. Well, that's probably true. <laughs> you're you're so happy that you're alive, you don't care anymore. <laughs> what did you do to your knee? I had a water skiing accident. I was uh, a snotty little college kid that was going to spray a dock full of my friends. Uh-huh. And uh, when the boat came around to to line up to go spray it, the boat got too close to the dock, mm-hmm. so I couldn't spray. So I had to, I mean, so I had to just say I'm not going to do anything. So, and, it, and in my old times, I could run a slalom course, skiing, and so I'm, you know, pretty good, and or think I'm pretty good. And so, and, but instead of spraying them, I just had to ease back over, like you did when you learned how to go outside the wake and come back, you just eased. Mm-hmm. I don't know what happened. When I was easing back over, I fell forward. The ski flipped backwards. It turned sideways, Ooh. and it chopped my kneecap in two pieces. Oh, okay. And so There are people eating. And so oh. they had to go in and take it out, and it was not fun. So now do you know when it's going to rain? Oh, gosh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can t- I know it's going to rain. I can tell you, and I can usually tell you when it's, how much it's going to rain, too. Oh, really? The pain tolerance goes, I mean, the pain level goes way up if we're going to have a big rain. I may text you this summer if I need to know. Uh, if you want to know when it's going to rain. I, my knees were great last year. We didn't have any rain. It was great. <laughs> Coach, we beat Tennessee Tech 87-80, the championship game in overtime. How did you beat Tech after you had played two games in a row? And as you said, Butler and Newsom had played 80 minutes each, and then you've got uh, Rikisha at 70-plus. Well, we go into that game. Where's, where's uh, Keisha's minutes go from uh, 34, which we thought was too many. So we went to 37, which we thought was definitely too many. And now she plays 44. Yeah. Uh, and I, I told them as soon as the game against Eastern Illinois was over, I said, you just start getting your mind right about what it's going to take in this next ball game. And it's, it's not going to come down to anything, making shots. It's not going to come down to rebounding or defense. It's not going to come down to making a shot. It's not going to come down to a free throw. It's not going to come to anything like that. It's going to come down to which team is going to uh, exert its will on the other one. Um, and I said, and it, it, it's that simple. Now, you have to do all those other things to, to exert your will, but it, 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 something crazy will happen. It's going to be weird, and you just got to – which team refuses to bend? They're just not going to let anything happen that they don't want to happen. And – I didn't know I was that much of a prophet because that's all that game was because we got Mm out-rebounded, we got out-shot, we got out-played defensively, we got everything out-done except we figure out a way how to win a ball game. I mean, you're down down three points with 11.8 to go on the clock, and you're shooting a one-and-one. Well, okay, what has to happen for you to have a chance to win the ball game? What has to happen from that point to the end of the game in 11.8 seconds? Well, you've got to make the one-and-one. Okay. That was your freshman at the line. Yeah, right? With a freshman at the line who's probably shot two, four free throws all year. Chelsea Hall. Uh, Chelsea Hall, who makes them both. Mm-hmm. You have to foul. We had two team fouls, maybe three. Yeah. Two or three. Yeah, I wanted to talk about this because yeah, you're in trouble now because you need to foul to stop the clock, but you only have three team fouls, I mm-hmm. think. Uh, so sometimes it's beneficial to not have a lot of team fouls. Sometimes it really hurts you. In this case, I thought it was going to hurt you. I actually think now it was beneficial. Well, I saw it at – at three minutes, I saw and thought we need to start fouling at th- to get just to get our fouls up, mm-hmm. just in case we needed it. And then I thought, no, as long as it's a one possession game, I'm not going to worry about it. And it stayed a one possession game all the way until the 11.8. And then at that point, it was we have to foul four times, four or five. I don't remember how many it was, four or five times uh, just to get them on the free throw line. Uh, so we fouled four times, and I think it went down from 11.8 to 8.2 that was impressive. or you, something like you're, that. You're, you're guarding an inbounds uh, baseline pass from backcourt. Yep. And, w- I mean, we, we told them, and the thing is, and they said it in the press conference, they talked about something like that. The ones who let the ball in, do you remember, do you remember who, who let Jasmine. it in? Jasmine. And Butler. Yeah, yeah both of them. Yeah. 
And I got all over them. I'm like, guys, everybody else is doing their jobs. Y'all letting the ball inbounds. Come on, let's go. Well, they got the ball inbounds four straight times. There's still eight point whatever on the clock. And uh, so now we've got to go down there, and she she can make them both, and we can still make a three. Or she needs to miss one, and we can go get a two. Um, you hope she misses one. Hope she misses them both. But you, she's got to miss one to really give you a good chance. Well, then if she misses it, you got to get the rebound. So – she did miss them both, one of them. Uh, we did get the rebound. Well, now Jasmine's got to go the length of the floor, and she's got to get a bucket. And she's got to do it probably one on two or one on three. And she does it. She on goes the down the left side of the floor. On the left side of the floor. The right hand. Uh, and I had Butler on the right side and Jasmine on the le- and, uh, and Megan White on the left. And if they helped, she was going to kick it. We'd shoot a three. And if we won it, we won it. If we lost it, we lost it. Well, they didn't help. So Jasmine went all the way to the rim and put it in. And. Uh, I mean, it was amazing that, that we could do what we did in that last 11.8 seconds. But once again, it was what I told them. I said, it's going to be something you're just going to have to will it done. I mean, there's no drawing up stuff. There's no well doing it. There were two things in the game I'd never seen before. Uh, Rakisha, like a 14-footer, and it's a three-point play. She's fouled on, on the jump. That started the overtime. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we, we got into overtime. Two, two things happened in overtime that uh, I, I, give, I give our coaching staff a huge amount of credit for. Uh, one was that we went we went back to the one three one, um, and I personally didn't want to go back to the one three one because they'd made one hundred and seventy four threes against us. They did. Uh, they had gotten six thousand three hundred twenty nine <laughs> rebounds, and we hadn't done anything. And uh, when we got out there, I said, I said, guys, we're going to go back man. And Coach Russell said, I think we need to go back to one three one. And I looked at him like you've lost your mind. But but I thought, I mean, it didn't take me very long if. If he wants to go the one three one, there's a reason he's saying that. Well, the man's won a thousand games, and mm-hmm. you know he's got ten rings now, mm-hmm. so he's gonna have to put put them somewhere besides his fingers. <laughs> he's gonna put them on his toes. And if he says that, then he's sticking his neck out, and I'm gonna go with it. And uh, so we did. We went to one three one, and it looked like a genius call on my part. I didn't have anything to do with it. Coach right. Russell said do it. Uh, the other one was we we put Keisha in the high post, and then overtime. And uh, instead of leaving it open to try to penetrate, we put Keisha in the high post, and she had made a couple of good plays out of it. Well, she immediately made another good play out of it and got fouled and hit a bucket, uh, and it ended up being the deciding factor of the game. Uh, and you know, But she just had a phenomenal game, played 44 minutes, had a career-high 20 points, shot the ball eight times, made every one of them, uh, shot four free throws, made every one of them. Amazing. Uh, had double figures in rebounds, had five or six block shots, just played absolutely unbelievable, and but there were a lot of big plays that happened over that three days, and uh, you know we got them from a lot of different kids. Coach, you're going to be asked this all week. We're about out of time here, but a week from tonight we'll be at the selection uh, show, and we will be live on the air. We invite people to come out too. We'll be telling you more about that. What are your thoughts right now of where we could go and where we will be seated? I haven't looked at all of the places where we could go. Uh, there, I know uh, there's Knoxville and there's Louisville or Lexington. One's Louisville. got one. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Baton Rouge and Columbus. Columbus, Baton Rouge, and Ames, Iowa are the next four. We'll go to probably one of those five places, but we could end up back at Durham. Uh, I mean, there's just so many different options that, uh, you know, you just you just don't have any idea. Uh, I would expect us to be a 15 or a 16 seed. We have – We've played our way into that because of what we did in the middle of the season. Uh, we we set up the schedule to get out of that spot, um, but we didn't do what we should have done to get out of that spot, so we're back. The fortunate thing is you're playing in the NCAA tournament again. Mm-hmm. Uh, the unfortunate thing is is that we played ourselves to probably a 15 or 16 seed, and uh, that's a tough spot to be in, but uh, but – you just got to keep. You just do the best you can every single night, and if it works out great, and if it doesn't, you deal with what you got to deal with. Uh, so I would expect us to be a 15 or a 16 seed, and uh, and have another. That's a tough. That's a tough spot to be in. But, but again, you know, you this team to come from where they came about four weeks ago oh. to get to this point, I think it's. I think it's one of the biggest. I think it rivals what our, we did our first year. I agree. Uh, and and I, I give them a lot of credit because I have I have been. I've been real tough on them all year long. I've been real, real uh, frank about what I thought they would had, had, where they thought they'd let us down, and some things I thought they weren't doing. But what they did in the last month and a half of this season has been almost as amazing as what that first year's group did. I mean, we we had played ourselves to where we weren't in the tournament uh, two months ago, weren't in it, uh, didn't even have a chance of getting a bye. I mean, we didn't have a chance of being a, one of the top four seeds. Well, number one, they made sure they were in the tournament. Number two, they got one of the top four seeds. 
and then they go and win three games in three days, which had never been done. Uh, and the way they won them all, it, it's just phenomenal what those kids did. And so I think they've done about the best job that they could do uh, this last month and a half of the season. Okay. We'll see you a week from tonight, and we'll talk with some of the players and you, and we'll know where we're going after that night. So. All right. It'll be fun.